Hey, this is day 234. We're reading the whole Bible this year. Today we have Jeremiah 46 through 48. Let's get into it. These three chapters are a series of judgments against pagan nations. One might ask, why would the Lord bother judging uh, nations that aren't supposed to be his? Yet, the Lord created everyone in his image. The Lord created all things, and he is the king and ruler of all of creation, not just Israel. Israel is the only nation that has an actual covenant with him, but every nation is subject to the assumed covenant of existence, that there is an inherent right and wrong and conscience and whatnot put into us. There's opportunity for all to turn to follow and seek out the Lord instead of worshiping false gods and so on. And so from the beginning of time, people have been judged for worshiping false gods. And that's sort of the prerogative from which we get to see these judgments against Egypt, against the Philistines, and against Moab. Even more, each of these three nations have come against Israel and worked against God's people before. And so there's a little more reason for their judgment that they had opportunity to come and be a partner with and join with Israel. And instead, they worshiped other gods and stood against Israel. And so now they are going to be punished. And so chapter 46 is going to be all about Egypt and its punishment before the Lord. The first chunk of it we get concerning Egypt. This is the message uh, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was defeated at Carchemish on the Euphrates River by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. And so some of this stuff is a little further back in time than we've already read some parts of Jeremiah that have taken us all the way into the time of the exile and some of the exiles returning. Now we're looking back at some of the prophecies that are gathered that they're sort of collected here at the end of Jeremiah. It's a series of judgments against the other nations. And so content-wise, there's some uh, reason for them being collected here, even though chronologically this prophecy would have been given before the fall of Judah and Jerusalem, before the exile started. A couple of things to point out as, uh, or highlights, I guess. While we see the destruction of warring nations against one another, because really all of this is about how Babylon is going to come and crush Egypt. And that's not just two nations that happen to be fighting and one of them's going to win, but there's also the Lord's work at hand here. And it says here in verse 15, why will your warriors be laid low? They cannot stand for the Lord will push them down. It's the Lord taking credit for each of these things that will happen. It says, uh, verse 18, As surely as I live, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty, one will come who is like Tabor among the mountains, like Carmel by the sea. Pack your belongings for exile, you who live in Egypt, for Memphis will be laid waste and lie in ruins without inhabitant. It says, Egypt is a beautiful heifer, but a gadfly or a horsefly is coming against her from the north. And so there's going to be a, a biting fly that's going to come harass and sting and, and bother and injure Egypt. And Egypt will be taken down by Babylon at this time. In chapter 47, we get into a rather short chapter, but a prophecy against the Philistines. And once again, we see that the Lord is saying that all of these things will happen and will come by his will and by his hand, even though these are pagan, unrighteous nations, like we heard Habakkuk argue against the Lord, like, why would you send them? How can you send somebody like that? And he's like, I will do all of what I want to to accomplish my righteousness in this world. And those who have not stood with me will be ultimately punished, but I may use one unrighteous faction against another to punish them, and then they will get theirs as well in the end. But at this time, we see the Philistines. 47 verse 4 says, For the day has come to destroy all the Philistines and to cut off all survivors. Who could help Tyre and Sidon? The Lord is about to destroy the Philistines, the remnant from the coasts of Kaftor. And so once again, the Lord is taking credit. In chapter 48, it's quite a bit longer, but we have at least 11 different times that I counted where it says, this is what the Lord says, or as it concludes a section of judgment, it says, declares the Lord that every piece of what is going to happen to Moab, every element of their destruction and downfall is going to be as a direct result of Yahweh 
using others to bring down this pagan nation that has stood against Israel all of this time and has operated in unrighteous ways all of this time. If we look at verse 7, for instance, since you trust in your deeds and riches, you too will be taken captive, and Chemosh, which is their god, will go into exile together with his priests and officials. And so the Lord is saying, I'm going to do this thing because you worship this false god and you're your God has no power against me. I will send him into exile as well. He can't stand against me. In verse 12 and 13, it says, but the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send men who pour from jars and they will pour her out. They will empty her jars, smash her jugs. Then Moab will be ashamed of Chemosh as the house of Israel was ashamed when they trusted in Bethel. When Israel worshiped false gods in Bethel, they ultimately, when all of that was smashed to pieces, they they found themselves ashamed. And God is saying that's what's going to happen to Moab as well. And so when we look at this and look at the chaos in here and in the world around us, I think we easily see that there's all this stuff going on and, Lord, and sometimes we can feel like Habakkuk going, Lord, how can you allow all this stuff to happen? Why do you continue to allow evil to operate and exist and even succeed in this world? And we see that on the longer scale of things, the Lord wins out. The Lord always has his will accomplished. And in the short term, it's to us to trust him and those who, even in the midst of all of this, there's always mention of those who are faithful, the remnant who always place their faith and trust in the Lord and rely on him. They are saved. They will be blessed. They will, in the end, be declared righteous and brought into the presence of the Lord. And how do we do that? By placing faith in Christ and his righteousness lands on us and we are counted among his children, his family, his kingdom. That's what stands out to me. Trust in the Lord, despite what's going on in the world. I'd love to hear what insights and thoughts you have. So jump in the comments and let's talk about that. Thank you for reading along with us, keeping faithful as you pursue truth in God's word and be rad for Jesus.